when in fact you could live a blessed life. Right here in Psalm 32. It says right here, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven and whose sin is covered. That's the biggest blessing. That's the most important blessing anybody ever needs. A lot of people say, oh, well, you, you, you got a pay raise, or, or you got a nice wife or a husband, or you got some nice thing in your life. What a blessing. No. What you need is to have your transgression forgiven and your sin covered. That's what you need. Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, in whose spirit there is no guile. That's the blessing you need. That's an eternal blessing. That's not a blessing that's going to fade with the next... Next time the, the stock market drops, or the next time there, there's bad weather and your house gets destroyed, or somebody lies to you and leaves you when they promised before God and everybody that they'd, they'd be your spouse for the rest of your life. That's not the blessing of the Lord for all of eternity. When I kept silence, my bones whacked old through my roaring all the day long. For day and night thy hand was heavy upon me. My moisture is turned into the drought of summer. Think about that. I acknowledged my sin unto thee, and mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. He is the one you need to confess your transgressions unto. See, the devil tells people, well, confess your transgressions unto a man. So the devil says, confess your transgressions and your sin unto a priest. So some wicked pervert in some silly costume can hear about your sin. The Catholic Church can't do anything about your sin. Your religious activity can't do anything about your transgressions and your unrighteousness. You need to confess your transgressions unto the Lord. And the Lord forgave us the iniquity of my sin. Think about that. That's what happens with a repentant sinner that has faith in Jesus Christ, not faith in a church. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto thee in a time when thou mayest be found. Surely in the floods of great waters they shall not come nigh unto him. Thou art my hiding place. Thou shalt preserve me from trouble. Thou shalt compass me about with songs of deliverance. Think about that. Someone who is born again in Christ, someone who has the indwelling of the Holy Ghost, shall have the shall have the Lord as their hiding place. Shall be preserved from trouble by the Lord. Those people will be compassed about with songs of deliverance. Praise God. That's what the Psalms are all about. You could sing about God's deliverance when you have His Word hidden in your heart. When you have the Psalms of the Lord, when this world is crashing down around your ears, you're going to have the songs of the Lord. You're going to have the promises of God. Think about that. I will instruct thee and teach me in the way which thou shalt go. Now this is God talking to the godly man. The creator of heaven and earth talking to his children. I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. Be thee not as the horse or as the mule which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, lest they come near unto me. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. And that's not that's not a that's not a far off concept, is it? Many sorrows shall be unto the wicked. The wicked fornicators get their sexually transmitted diseases. There are herpes and chlamydia and crabs and human papilloma virus and syphilis and gonorrhea and genital warts. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. The drunkards, they get a hangover, they lose their money, they get tickets, they get jail time, they get broken relationships. Many sorrows are to the wicked. And the idolaters, they put their faith and trust into a religious system or into some object they pray to. And they've had no forgiveness of sin. Their transgressions, transgressions have not been covered. Many sorrows to the wicked. But he that trusteth in the Lord, mercy shall compass him about. That's what everybody needs. The mercies of the Lord to compass them about. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, ye righteous. And shout for joy, all ye that are upright in heart. 
See, it's the upright in heart people that can shout for joy with legitimacy. The wicked of the world, oh, they can shout for joy for worldly things, for temporal things, for evil things. They can shout their joy, but it doesn't satisfy. The evil things of this world don't satisfy. Your beer is not going to satisfy. That's why you got to drink more and more and more all the time. Your sexual promiscuity is not going to satisfy. That's why you fornicate with this person, that person, and then somebody else. Your drug abuse doesn't satisfy. Oh, you get high today, then you need to get high tomorrow, and then maybe you try something else so you can get high some more. None of that satisfies. People say they can't get no satisfaction. It's because they're wicked, worldly people. It's like... This life and this earth isn't about your satisfaction. Life is about the satisfaction of the Lord. Is the creator of heaven and earth, is your judge satisfied with the way you're living your life? I mean, so many people in this world, they admire wicked, useless people like Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley, he had the fame, he had the fortune, he had some sort of talent, and what did Elvis Presley do? He did drugs until he died on the toilet. You got people like Robin Williams. Robin Williams, everybody thought he was just so funny and such a wonderful actor. He had all the fame, he had all the money, he had all the accolades, and what did he do? He strung himself up by his neck in a closet. So many people follow the foolish, wicked people of the world. So many people thought that Michael Jackson was so wonderful. Such a great singer and such a great dancer and entertainer Michael Jackson was. But what did he do? He hired some so-called doctor to inject him with fentanyl till he died. Like I said, those people are not living the blessed life. The blessed people they do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. They don't live their lives for their, their pleasure. They don't follow their dreams. See, the people that die in their sin are the ones that followed their dreams. Robin Williams followed his dream. Kurt Cobain followed his dream. Jimi Hendrix followed his dreams. They followed him right into the flames of hell. Don't follow dreams. Follow Jesus Christ. Don't follow your ideas. Don't make things up and think that that's the way to live. God has had it written down in black and white and you can read it. Praise God, just about everybody out here today can read the word of the Lord. That's his blessing for you. And praise God, anybody out here could download a good King James Bible app onto their iPhone. Now some of you may need to remove some of your pornography to make room for it. That would be a step in the right direction. But there's so many people in America today, they think just because they go to a church building from time to time, or maybe they've gone their whole life, that, they're, that that's how they're getting to heaven. But Jesus told, told us just the opposite. Jesus said, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. There's many people that are going into destruction, thus saith the Lord. You know why? Because straight is the way and narrow is the gate that leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. You know why they don't find it? Because they're not looking for it. Most people, they don't want the straight way. They don't want the narrow way. They want the broad way. They want the crooked way, the fun way, where all their friends are going. Yes, there are many on the broad way to destruction. See, Jesus told us to judge. Jesus commanded his followers to judge righteous judgment. And right here in 1 John chapter 3, it says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Praise God. He that committed sin is of the devil. Are you committing sin tonight? That's because you're of the devil. Jesus told people that those people that sin, that 
They love their religious activity. They are of their father, the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God did not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin, because he is born of God. In this the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil. Whosoever doeth not righteousness is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. See, the people of God love to do righteousness. The people that are of their father, the devil, well, they do the works of the The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. In the net which they hid is their own foot taken. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executeth. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. The wicked shall be turned into hell in all nations that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten. The expectation of the poor shall not perish forever. Arise, O Lord, let not man prevail. Let the heathen be judged in thy sight. Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. See, what we need more of America and more in America is the law of God. God's law is what would make America great again. Right here in Psalm 19, it says, The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold. Talking about the testimony and the statutes and the commandments and the judgments of God. They're more to be desired than, than, than gold. Yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter than any honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is thy servant warned, and in keeping them there is great reward. Yes, the law and the statutes and the word of the Lord, the commandments of God, the precepts of the creator of heaven and earth. More valuable than gold and sweeter than any honey. Praise God for his word that he's preserved it for us for these thousands of years. Of course, that was his promise to preserve it unto every generation. Praise God. See, and if you were born again, made a new creature in Christ, you could be somebody that praises God with your life. You could praise God like with Psalm 150. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Do you have breath today? You're supposed to be praising the Lord with that breath. The Bible says, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. You should be praising Him because He gave you that breath. That heartbeat in your chest. He started that heartbeat in your chest. And He's going to stop it one day and you're going to stand before Him. And if you're not born again, you're going to stand before Him and give an account. You're going to give an account for your life. And you're going to be found wanting in the balance. You're not going to measure up if you die in your sin. You're going to pay for your sin for all of eternity in the lake of fire and brimstone that, that Jesus told us about. Of course, Jesus is the righteous, the righteous one to cast people into there because he's the one that died for all of mankind. He made the way out of it. See, the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. That's what you earn. 
Sin earns death. Smoking cigarettes earns death. Drinking alcohol earns death. Idolatry earns death. Fornication earns death. Having sex with people you're not married to earns death. But the gift of God, the word of the Lord goes on to say, the gift of the Lord, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So you don't want the wages. You don't want the wages of your sin. It's kind of like a job. People have a job, they work eight hours in a day, maybe 40 hours in a week. And at the end of a week or two weeks or a month or whatever, you get a wage. You get what you've earned. Well, God is earning up a wage for you for the works of your entire life. And you're going to be paid that wage if you die in your sin. You don't want that wage. Because the wages of sin is death. Eternal death. A death in hell. Death in hell and the lake of fire. What you need is the gift of God. The gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That's what you need. But there's only one way to get that gift. And that's through faith in Jesus Christ. And repentance towards God. That would be grief and godly sorrow for all of your sin. Grief and godly sorrow for disobeying the Lord that gave you life, that gave you breath, that gave you the good things in your life. Grief and godly sorrow for being such a wicked person in the sight of a holy God. And God would be faithful and justified, giving you a new soul, a new heart, a new eternal destiny. You can become a new creature in Christ. You can have a new eternal family. So many people are worried about their family here on earth as far as whether or not they're accepted. Many people reject the Lord. They reject their potential Savior in favor of their temporary earthly family. When Jesus Christ said he was going to divide the, the believers from the unbelievers, even if they're in the, the same household. You need to fear the Lord, not fear man. The Bible says right here, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and, and instruction. Don't be a fool. Don't despise wisdom and instruction. You could, be, you could begin to have knowledge through the fear of the Lord. Again, there's two types of people on the earth. There's the righteous and the evil people. There's the people that want to be righteous in the sight of God, the people that have been made righteous by the Spirit of the Lord and the people that want to do evil. The people that love their sin, that are proud of their wickedness. The Bible says, The way of the Lord is strength to the upright, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. Yes, the day is coming when the wicked shall not inhabit the earth. It's not going to be any more pedophiles. It's not going to be any more racists. It's not going to be any more drunkards. There's not going to be any more idolaters. It's not going to be any more earth murderers on the earth. Name the sin. They won't be here. The wicked shall not inherit the earth. The mouth of the just bringeth forth wisdom, but the forward tongue shall be cut out. The forward tongue, the uncontrollable tongue. The people that can only speak foolishness. Those tongues are going to be cut out. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable. It's very easy to know what's acceptable because it is written. The lips of the righteous know what is acceptable, but the mouth of the wicked speaketh forwardness. That's the uncontrolled foolishness and nonsense. As a man with a skateboard on the corner over here demonstrated earlier, he could have nothing but foolishness coming out of his mouth. That's the forward tongue. And that's part of the problem of this wicked generation. The Bible tells us about the, the generation that we have in America today. It says here in Proverbs 30, there is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. That's pretty obvious. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. 
There is a generation, oh how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives, to devour the poor from off the earth, and the needy from among men. There is the wicked generation. It's all, all glory to God, all glory to the Lord.